Knock, knock. <laughs> You're stealing my bed? I'll kill your family. <laughs> That's not how a knock, knock joke works. Knock, We're, knock, Michael. You don't do knock, knock jokes with Russians. Because then we have to knock at the door. Shh, turn down the TV. You got to sit quiet and hope they go away. This is, You don't do that back in the motherland. You know this. It's triggering. Who's there? <laughs> I can't even do it now. Knock, knock. Who's there? Leon. Leon who? Leon me when you're not strong, Michael. Well, well that will never happen. <laughs> I stole elegantly, eloquently that joke from you. <laughs> the lie detector term, that was a lie. <laughs> elegantly and eloquently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you crossed it on a sheet of paper that means it's real the reason i bring it up is because you had the guts the brilliance to to uh do a knock knock joke not once but three times with alex jones i think it was like six i had a runner okay maybe i just they started to sort of uh melt together in this beautiful art form that you've created which is like these kind loving knock knock jokes with alex jones so you got a chance to meet him and talk with him twice with uh, Tim Pool. Yeah. In a long form conversation. What was it like talking to Alex Jones, both on the deep philosophical intellectual level <laughs> and staring the man in his eyes <laughs> and doing a knock knock joke about Olive, knock knock, who's there? Olive, I love you, Alex. I love you. <laughs> Well, there's a lot to, to explain. I, where, I, where do you start? I've been on his show, InfoWars, a few times when I was researching my book, Then You Write. So mm -hmm. I had had conversations with him before. One of the things that I appreciate about Alex is he is a lot more self-aware than people think and has a good sense of humor. And I also like a good twist ending. So if you set people up and all these jokes are these kind of vapid you know, all of you jokes and the last one's about building seven, uh, they're not going to see that one coming, nor will he see that one coming. I even had another one about Sandy Hook, which I didn't do on the air because he was being like a good sport. So I didn't, but that was the dagger that was kind of behind my back if necessary. But it was a good mechanism toward, I, I like it when things work on several levels. It was also a good mechanism to keep kind of the conversation guarded. And this every so often, this is kind of hitting the control alt delete and bring it down uh, um, to a certain point of calmness. What about the love thing? I mean, you, you're saying that, that that was a build up to the dagger, but it was also somehow really refreshing to get that little jolt, like that pause. You don't get that in conversations often. Like I'm a huge fan of Rogan and he'll have a three hour conversation, but at some point just pause and be like, I love you, man. Like, like, it's in the cheesiest way possible because that seems to be, it somehow hits the hardest then. I don't know. I don't know you didn't intend it that way, but with Alex Jones to sit there and to say, I love you. That was like, that. I just haven't never heard that before. And so it struck me as like, not just funny for what you're doing, but just like, whoa, we just took cuz uh conversations are all about like this ranting especially with Alex Jones yeah. just like ranting about this or that this this part of the world like can you believe this shit that kind of thing but like to pause and be like this is awesome i don't know if you felt that way but oh oh i definitely felt that way so it was actually very fun i'll give you the backstory of how that happened um it it was uh, it was almost it was silly because Tim calls me up and there's this expression in marketing, don't go past the sale, right? So if you're trying to sell someone a car and you're like, it's got this feature, this feature, and that feature, and they're like, you know what? I'm going to buy the car. If you keep talking, you can only make them lose the sale. You just get them to sign it and get, get out of Dodge. So Tim calls me up and he goes, okay, uh, here's what we're thinking. This is top secret. Alex is going to be on the show. We want you on as well. And I've never said yes to anything as quickly in my life. <laughs> um, and then he keeps talking and I'm like, Tim, this you don't have to sell it. I, I interrupted him. I go, you don't have to sell it. Anymore. Why you, by the way? I think because um, I am kind of an agent of chaos and Alex is in his own way an agent of chaos. And what is provides an opportunity in this kind of new media space that you and I travel in, it's the kind of things where n none of us three you know, as we said on the show, knew what it would be like. If you you know 
to certain within certain parameters what you know megan kelly or wolf blitzer or any of these corporate figures are going to be like in a conversation to some extent none of us had any idea i knew they didn't know i was bringing knock knock jokes yeah um so that was kind of what was so ex so i said at one point i'm kind of envious of the audience yeah. because this is there's so many exciting things that are happening and that the internet and podcasting provides people an opportunity to do that it, it was great yeah that that was the greatest pairing with alex jones that i've ever seen by far so like wow okay thank like, you so i immediately knew now this isn't a knock on tim but i don't even know if tim was prepared tim was not prepared for this couple how could he be prepared well, so I, I mean, I don't know if Tim is used to that. I think Joe Rogan is more equipped, prepared for the chaos, just the years he's been in it. Like I immediately thought this is the right pairing for Joe Rogan because Alex Jones has been on Joe Rogan th a few times, yeah. uh, three times. My favorite so far was with Tim Dillon. Right, for Jan, yeah. Not that but long Tim was clearly, uh, Tim Dillon was also kind of uh, uh, a genius in his own right, but he was kind of a fan and he was back and he was stepping away. He was almost like in awe of Alex Jones where uh, you were both, you were in awe of the experience yeah. that's being created. And at the same time, fearlessly just trolling the situation. I mean, to do a knock knock joke, to stop I me, mean, that just shows that you're in control of the experience. No, you're like riding the experience. That immediately was like, this needs to be on Rogan. So I, I hope that happens as well. Just you, you on your own, of course, on Rogan, but just you, that's an experience. That's the whatever, there's gotta be a good name for it. Like Jimi Hendrix experience. There's the mic going out. <laughs> because that was a band. <laughs> it's taken. <laughs> well, I don't know how many years you can, <laughs> you can restart the, the experience. Because okay. I feel, sorry to interrupt you, I feel a very big responsibility, especially in 2020, yeah. to provide fun and something cool and something unique that hasn't been done before for the audience. I think this has been a very rough year on our audiences psychologically and in other aspects of their lives. So I feel if I'm going to be there, I'm going to put on a show. And it's also going to be great because it also alienates the people you don't want, right? So there's a lot of people who sit there and be like, oh, he's telling knock... Pe people who are too cool for school, uh, where they're like, oh, he's telling knock-knock jokes. This is stupid. I'm like, good. If you have an issue with having f eaten cotton candy or doing a puzzle with a kid or with, without it, you know, by yourself, that's on you. And it's something very, I, something I think is the enemy of cynicism and this idea that like, oh, this is too silly and, and beneath me. It's like, we need that kind of childlike aspect in our lives. I think it's something we could use more of. It's very much an aspect of our media culture that to kind of have be condemnatory about that or to do it in a certain very corporate fake way. So it is something I encourage a lot, something I enjoy doing. Um, and again, I, I like with the first time I was on Tim, I had a propeller beanie on, you know, with, yeah. with the motorized. And a lot of people were like, I can't take anyone seriously who dresses like this. I go, good. If you judge someone's ideas by how they appear instead of the ideas themselves, you're not someone I want on my team. 